Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are on a budget or you are looking for some amazing mass market decks or tarot decks that are just at a very affordable price, keep watching. I thought it would be really fun to start a series where I share with you some of my favorite affordable tarot decks. I'll probably also share Oracle along the way, but today I have five amazing tarot decks, decks that I genuinely really, really enjoy and that are at a great price point. I tried to pull from my collection some decks that I know are currently still available, are in a decent price range and are really different from one another because I wanted to show a broad range of what you can get out right now in the mass market. Mass market, if you hear that term, mass market just means it's published by a big public publishing house or even a smaller publishing house. And so it's available at a more affordable price. Publishing houses typically have better or uh, bigger, I guess you could say, buying power. They're able to buy more decks at a time, which is why the price point is lower. And lately, even actually in the last few years, the quality of decks that we're seeing in that mass market has dramatically improved. A lot of publishers have really stepped up their game. They seem to be really listening to the tarot and oracle deck community and listening to the kinds of things we like, whether it comes to cardstock or variety or diversity or whatever it might be. I feel like that has been shifting, that landscape has been changing, and it's been really great to see. Um, whether you're looking for a modern deck or a more traditional deck, um, I feel like there's something you can find for sure in that affordable mass market area. An independent deck is often made by somebody who's going it alone or with a very small team, and so they are, have to buy in smaller quantities. Sometimes they do pre-orders to guarantee a certain number of sales, and that often makes the price point a lot higher for a similar quality. Independent creators, they deeply care about the tarot, and they tend to um, really put a lot of thought into quality, into the finished product, into the experience of the reader who's going to get it in their hands. And some mass market, companies can sometimes miss the boat on that a little bit. But without with all that sort of said, let's jump into today's affordable mass market tarot decks. So the first one I want to talk about, now this was a deck that was sent to me um, for review, so I didn't buy this myself. To be honest, I had anti-hauled this deck and I actually was really impressed by the company that reached out to me. This is the Modern Witch Tarot deck by Liminal Eleven. Now when Liminal Eleven reached out to me, one thing that really caught my attention is when I told them, they asked if I wanted to review this deck, and when I told them I had anti-hauled it, they were like, well that makes us want to send it to you even more. And I was like, oh that's great, because it means that they're not worried about um, an honest review. And that's always to me very telling about the thought and care that a company puts into their decks. I do not accept decks, period, that I either know that I don't like right out of the gate or that um, I feel like there might be an expectation of a particular type of review, period, and stop. Like that does, that's not what I'm about. So the fact that they made it so clear that they just wanted an honest review, it really, it really was impressive to me. Um, and it's not that it's uncommon, it's not at all. It's just, I just really liked the way they handled that conversation. But that's a bit of a side note. The Modern Witch Tarot deck is illustrated by Lisa Sturl, and it has this really wonderful, let's get us zoomed in. It has a really, really wonderful um, diversity throughout it. It's got a very modern feel. If you're looking for something that has a lot of personality and a lot of sass, it's got clean lines. It's really easy to look at and read the symbols in the deck. And I think it's relatable, right? Um, you see body diversity, you see racial diversity. I can't remember if there's a ton of age diversity in this deck, but I really like that it seems to reflect the modern world that we live in while staying incredibly true to the traditional setups and body language and all of that of the traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot. Um, this is actually a bonus card, but I love having it in the deck, even though the Ten of this is basically the Ten of Swords, but they gave give it to you as an extra card and it also says everything is fine. Um, so if you want a deck to just get started reading with and you want to read according to more traditional Rider Waite Smith symbology, but you maybe don't feel drawn to the Rider Waite Smith artwork, then this is a fantastic deck because it really holds very true. So it's a true Rider Waite Smith clone in that way. But again, it reflects the modern world that we live in. 
Um, and I like seeing more realistic people, if that makes any sense, in this deck. So this is a really great one. It typically retails for anywhere around, I'm going to use US dollars because I think that's most relatable to the most people, but around $20 to $25 US. Um, so it's incredibly affordable. The cardstock is really sturdy. My one beef with this deck is that it's really extra sturdy. So it's hard to um, riffle shuffle it, which is where you take the two piles and go like that. I can do it and I have pretty strong and larger hands, um, but it is quite difficult to do. It's incredibly glossy. It does feel like the kind of deck I could take and to just about any location and not be worried I was gonna mess it up. And it also does shuffle this way really well. And if you don't know how to shuffle this way, it's just a couple cards at a time. You just drop them into your other hand and it gets easier with practice, right? You can also put a couple in the back and a couple in the front, right? I usually just go in the front. Um, other things that are nice about a deck like this with this kind of cardstock is that it fans beautifully, so you can also do this way. And I actually do some um, sometimes read in this way where I sort of feel through the cards either energetically with my receptive hand, or I just fan them out and I kind of just play and see what wants to come out, come out, right? And that's a great way to draw cards if you don't want to shuffle. Um, but again, this is such a fantastic deck. It comes with a little hardbound booklet. Um, and this is great. It gives you just enough. It's black and white in my copy of the deck. I don't know if they've changed that, but mine's black, got black and white thumbnails of the major arcana cards. And then just little paragraph or so for all of the minor arcana cards. Um, so it's just enough information to get started without being like terribly overwhelming. So again, this one is just a great, a great buy. The next one on my list is, I think, really underrated. Um, it's really cute. It's got a fantastic guidebook. And if you're somebody who's just getting started reading and you want something affordable to play with that's a little different, I think this one does a really, really great job. And especially if you are usually a little bit intimidated by the tarot, you want like an Oracle style deck, or maybe you think you need an Oracle deck because you don't really have time or the interest in really learning the tarot. I think this is such a great accessible deck. Um, this is by Knock Knock Publishing and it's the Affirmators Tarot. It is an animal themed deck. Um, it comes in a really nice sturdy box. Oh, by the way, so does the, um, I'm just gonna grab it, but I don't have it. The Modern Witch Tarot also comes in a really nice sturdy box. I just keep it in its in a bag, um, but it comes in a really nice slide out uh, box. That's, that's lovely. But anyways, Affirmators Tarot. So the Affirmators Tarot, um, you get this nice flip top box and a ribbon that helps you to pull out the cards. They are a little larger than tarot size um, and you get a really nice guidebook, which we'll look at in just a second. First, let's zoom in and take a look at the artwork. Oops, I totally knocked my camera. All right. So it looks at first glance like it's almost a little bit pippish, and it can be. And what I mean by that, if you don't know, is that pips or um, the, the minor arcana numbered cards, a pippish deck is one where you don't see really a scene, but you see just a number of items. So here we see seven cups, but it's with a narwhal. Um, what I, what's interesting is that when I first saw images of this deck, I thought it was just like seven cups, seven swords, whatever. But then I looked at the scene and I could actually see that there is a scene happening. Our narwhal's head is poking out of the water. Six of the cups are on its horn already. And it's trying to figure out what to take for its seventh cup or its seventh item. And there's this cup and all of this like smoke is coming out of it. And there's like a little planet, there's a moon, there's some diamonds, there's some hands that seem to be in a prayer position, a planet. Um, there's a little house, another planet. So the narwhal is trying to figure out what the next thing is it's going to pick, which does very accurately portray the meaning of the seven of cups. Um, it's a really cute deck with a fun illustration style and the cardstock is a like linen and it's pretty um, flexible and it has lots of, of bounce back. So it feels really sturdy. It almost feels a little bit on the plasticky side on the outside. So it does have some kind of lamination and that linen finish. Plus it's pretty, look at all the gold. I don't normally like words on the back of my deck. I wish it didn't have words, but it is really pretty. So I can deal with it. Um, here again, we have the five of pentacles and it looks like, oh, it's just five pentacles. But then you look at that little koala type creature and he's turning his pocket inside out. So he's missing, he's, you know, he's down in his luck financially. Um, so again, it looks like the illustration is very simple, but the more you look at it, the more you recognize that the meaning is definitely there. And I really appreciate that. So this is a really fun one to read with. Here we have some happy jelly, jellyfish and all their happy jellyfish children, which totally works for the 10 of cups. Um, our nine of pentacles surrounded by all of his wealth. 
our eight of wands, a lassoing, some fast moving energy. I mean, it just, it works. It really, really works. And so don't count this one out. And Knock Knock stuff actually um, makes incredibly inexpensive decks in general. They mostly Oracle decks. I think this is their only tarot. Um, and I love their Oracle decks. This shuffles really, really well hand over hand. It fans beautifully as linen cardstock tends to do and it riffles like a dream. Again, the cards are a little bit bigger, so if you have small hands, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but you get a great mix of cards. It shuffles really nice. I really, really enjoy this one. Um, the Affirmators Tarot typically retails for around $20 to $25 US, and um, I have a coupon code if it's still active. I think it should be, but I did, um, they sent me not this deck, but a different Oracle deck once and gave me a coupon code that I can share with you guys. I'll have that in the description box down below. Um, if you're in the US, use that coupon code because you'll save some money. If you're outside of the US, it may be cheaper to order on Amazon, so I'll have that link or get it from your local bookstore or whatever. I'll have that link down below as well, but anyway. Um, let's take a look at the guidebook because I think this is part of what makes this deck really great. For starters, it is a stitch bound guidebook um, and it feels really nice. It's monochrome in the middle. It's like this like a uh, turquoisey color, but actually there's really, really fantastic information in this little guidebook. So again, this is a very beginner friendly deck as well. Um, what I love is that you get a write up for every single card. You also get an affirmation, which I love. And the write-ups in this deck are really tongue-in-cheek and fun and, and memorable and entertaining. So it doesn't feel dry or heavy to read this. It does tend to take a slightly more positive spin, but it doesn't shy away from the difficult messages. It just delivers them in this like really great way where you feel like you're being talked to by a friend and not like dictated to, you know what I mean? So I think this is really great for that. So that is the Affirmators Tarot. And again, just love it. This next deck won't be everybody's cup of tea, so just know that. But again, I really wanted to show a variety of decks in this um, price range that are in the mass market. Now, this is the Deviant Moon Tarot by Patrick Valenza. This is an oldie but a goodie. It's been out for a long time. It is a deck that people tend to have really strong visceral reactions to because the artwork is pretty intense to look at. It can be really dark and creepy looking. Um, lots of people don't like that aesthetic at all. I was one of them. I was a very vocal anti-Deviant Moon person for a long time. And then for whatever reason, I got curious one day. It's affordable, so I ordered myself a copy and got my hands on it and I just love it. Now, the version I am showing you right now is the borderless version and I think this one kind of, I think last time I looked, um, it wasn't showing like it was currently in stock. I don't think it's out of print. I think it probably just goes in and out of stock. There's also a bordered version. Um, I believe that the only, either version only comes with a small little white book, which don't count this out. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But this artwork is, when you get it up close, and I wish the camera did it more justice, it it's so expressive there's so much to see and look at um here we have the hanged man and he has a little pocket watch hanging from his heel i really should do a full deep dive on this deck because there's a ton of, of small details that i think you could easily miss and it just really is a beautifully expressed version of the tarot even though the imagery seems really dark and creepy and it is there is so much like nuance to how you can read with this deck that I really love it. I found it to be incredibly helpful for shadow work and for darker or difficult messages or difficult experiences I might be going through when I really need that honest voice that's going to see the the, the struggle or see the difficulty. Um, it's, it's really great. I think a lot of people actually even got started with this deck because it's been out in the market for a while. I love this borderless version. It is a little taller and skinnier. Um, than a, a standard tarot card, but that makes it feel, I don't know, extra special. And I love these backings. So shuffling really easily, easy with this. It's a US Games published deck. So it's um, a really nice sturdy card stock. It's got a smooth finish. It's not overly glossy or overly matte. So it's very traditional in that way. Um, again, the cards are a little tall, so that may be difficult if you have larger hands, but it does fan beautifully. It's really easy to work with and I really, really enjoy it. You can definitely hear me talk more about this deck in my favorite decks for shadow work um, videos that I've done. I've done, a, I've done one, I've got another one coming um, if it's not out already at the time that I, I put this video up. Actually, I think it will be, I can't remember now what my schedule is, but anyway. Um, I will link one of those in the, one of those videos where I've talked about this deck in more depth in the cards for you. But let's talk about the little guidebook. So it is just a little white book, um, but it is actually really punchy and it does not shy away from giving you the message that you need. 
I actually use this guidebook. I use all my guidebooks when I read for myself. Um, I usually read the cards intuitively and then see what the guidebook has to say and then kind of put that together into a cohesive reading for myself. So don't count the guidebooks out for sure. This one, it seems really simple, but it's really good. It's got a basic introduction to what you're seeing in the artwork, which I love. I wish everybody would do that so they would describe what, what the artwork is representing. And then an upright and a reversed meaning, which is fantastic. Not everybody reads with reversals. Lots of people do. You have the options and this is great. I read with this deck with just this little white book for a long, long time. And then eventually somebody did gift me with the big coffee table book, which if I remember, I'll put a picture of it in on the screen somewhere for you. It is expensive, but it's a really beautiful book and it gives you a much deeper dive into all of the cards and it goes through the artistic process and it, it it just gives you a different perspective, but I don't think by any stretch that you need that bigger book. I think the smaller little white book is all you really need to read with this deck, but it is wonderful. The Deviant Moon Tarot typically retails in the $18 to $22 US dollar range from what I've seen lately, so that's about what you can expect to pay. It may depend on the version because the price that I saw when I was researching for this video currently was the bordered version, um, so it may be that this borderless version is a little more. I can't remember, but it's definitely usually less than $30. US. So definitely affordable, beautiful deck, uh, well worth your money, I think. Two more to go. And again, these were in no particular order. I Well, kind of. I might have saved my favorite for last. But this one is such a gem. And it is the Lightseer's Tarot by Hay House. This is by Chris Ann Donnelly. This is such a gorgeous deck. It's very high quality. The box is wonderful. This feels, when you get this deck, it feels like you've purchased an independent deck. It feels like you've spent you know, $60, $70 on it. I, I might be saying Canadian. <laughs> I don't know how much the independent versions of things are in the U.S. necessarily, but um, it's really, really well done. Um, and the beautiful thing about Hay House decks, um, and they've been really stepping up their game with cardstock, with boxes, with everything lately. Um, the nice thing about Hay House is that they regularly have sales. So if you keep an eye out on Hay House for a sale, you can get this deck for like an absolute steal. Um, I think they have 50% off sales. Sometimes they have buy one, get one kind of sales. They almost always have some kind of sale. So check Hay House before you buy, even, even compared to things like Amazon, where you can sometimes get decks for really, for not a lot of money. Um, the Hay House sales are almost always worth doing. And I live in Canada and I'm still able to buy from Hay House during the Hay House sale and their international shipping to Canada at least is incredibly affordable. So I put the price range for this deck at around $15 to $20 US. So this is probably the cheapest or gets the lowest in its price of all the decks that I'm showing you today. So let's zoom in and take a peek at some of the artwork. Now I had the original Kickstarter version of this deck. I did eventually let that go because I just, I, this is great. I ordered this in to see what the quality was like. I loved the quality. I loved the feel of it. I loved the way it had a compact guidebook and I just ended up sticking with this version. So that should tell you something right there. The artwork in the Lightseer's Tarot. The one I think most common criticism I've seen of this deck is that the characters in this deck do tend to be incredibly, like more on the young side. Um, I don't really mind that because I love how expressive the artwork is. So I like that I can see scenes. I don't always feel like I need to see myself in a tarot deck in order to relate to it. I feel like I just want to see imagery that like connects with my subconscious that helps me to see the, the meaning of the card or different meanings in the card depending on the context. But I really enjoy the way that this is illustrated. I think it's really beautifully done. And I enjoyed watching this deck come into creation. I was watching the artist, Christian, on Instagram as these images were, were released a little bit at a time. And I just think it's absolutely breathtaking. It's really great to read for a variety of situations. It is different enough from the Rider Waite Smith that I feel like it's got its own unique take and its own unique vision but it's close enough that it's a great deck that would still work well, I think, for people who are newer to tarot, especially with this meaty guidebook, which we'll talk about in a second. So yeah, this is just a really, really great deck. Again, reflects the world that we live in. I feel like it's modern. It does have a bit more of like a boho kind of feel to it, a little bit more um, free spirit, maybe even I would say new agey in feel, which can be really great. I love it. It feels like it's got a little bit of wildness to it. It's definitely got freedom of expression in it. I feel like the characters in this deck would be people that love to dance um, and express themselves in physical ways. So I feel like this, it just, it does that. This deck just expresses itself in a really tangible way. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Love that 10 of cups. So the cardstock on this deck is a really beautiful matte cardstock. It's 
not perfectly matte. It's got a little tiny bit of a sheen to it. You can see a little bit of a reflect if I catch the light just right. But in general, it's it feels like a matte deck. It feels sturdy. It's, it's a bit of a chunk, which I love, but it still has flex, so you can still shuffle it really easily. I actually enjoy the feel of this cardstock just a bit better than I did the independent version. So if you've been looking for the independent version, if you're like lamenting over the independent version, cardstock wise, this is beautiful. I haven't edged it. The um, original Kickstarter edition came with green edges. I haven't bothered to edge this yet. I probably will at some point, um, but I may even pick a different color just for fun. I don't know. On the other hand, I'll probably still do the green. I, I couldn't tell you. But I feel less precious about this deck, actually. And because it wasn't my independent Kickstarter version, I feel I'm much quicker to pull this out than I ever was my independent, which I think is something else to keep in mind. Sometimes when you spend a whole lot on a tarot deck, you get feeling precious about it and you don't want to like mess it up. And then you don't use it and enjoy it. And you've actually spent like twice the amount of money on something that is literally sitting there less than the things that you spent less on because you, you aren't afraid to use the things that you spent less on, if that makes any sense. So this is a great example of that where, I mean, it's it's not common for me to choose a mass market version of something over an independent, but I've done it a few times and I've never regretted it when I have. So um, just, just food for thought there. Now the guidebook in the Light Sears Tarot is very generous. It's absolutely wonderful. For all of the cards, you get a light message, a shadow message, a description, and these great little quotes that I think are really, really wonderful, little little sort of distilled messages. This is a beautiful guidebook to work, work with. Um, again, I think this is a very accessible deck for people who are newer to tarot. It doesn't feel overwhelming. It doesn't feel especially heavy or esoteric. And yet all the meanings are definitely there. Um, so great little guidebook, very generous with the information and everything you need is in here. I think there's even some, I could be wrong, but I think there's even some spreads. Yep, there are some spreads here, even in this like little guidebook. So again, everything you need is in here. Um, tremendous value. I hope Hay House keeps this one in like in print for a long time. I think it's essentially one of the tarot classics, in my opinion, of the last several years. And it'd be sad to see it go away because it's such a gem. So that is the Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann Donnelly and by Hay House Publishing. Um, did I mention all the publishing houses throughout? I think I have. Yeah, I have. Uh... Yeah. Okay, good. I'm just making sure that I'm keeping you posted on who's got what. You can sometimes order decks right from the publishing companies, right? You can, if you're in the U.S., you can order directly from U.S. Games. If you're, um, I think even if you're international, you can order from Hay House. Liminal 11, uh, the publisher of the Modern Witch Tarot, is based in the U.K., and you can order from them directly, I think. At least you can order um, limited edition versions of their decks, which come out and are beautiful. I think that's, yeah, I think that's, that's, that, that's it for publishing notes. Now, this is probably my favorite affordable tarot deck. Um, it, when I first started my channel, I did a series, the way that I wanted to show my collection, when my collection was itty bitty, um, this is the fountain tarot, just so I'm not, you know, doing the thing. Um, when I first showed my collection, I did a series on my channel called, I think it was called Tarot Knockouts. And what I did was I took all of my decks and I pitted them head, head to head, just randomly. So I would pick up two decks and pick one of those two. And I did that until I narrowed it all the way down to one, kind of like a tournament. I should do that again sometime. That was really fun. Um, this one ultimately ended up winning the the whole thing, the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Now my collection was smaller then, so I don't know how it would fare today. It would also depend on which got what deck got matched up with what. But the Fountain Tarot is really wonderful, and there is a lot of assumptions I think people make about this deck, and then they miss out. This is another one that was originally an independent deck. It is now um, currently available in the mass market, and it's pr it's published by RoostBooks.com. RoostBooks. Uh, it's my only Roost Books deck as far as I know. I love the hollow detailing on the box. And this was, I believe, the first deck I ever got that came in this um, magnetic flip open style box, which have become incredibly popular lately, but were really rare at the time that I got this deck. I love how beautifully this opens all the way up and unfolds. And I like that I don't have to fuss with a lid. It's just, it feels very premium. This deck tends to retail for around $25 to $30. So I think this one gets about the highest uh, in the U.S. compared to the other decks that I've shown, but it, you really feel the quality. Um, the guidebook has a linen cover. We'll talk about that in a bit. And then you have a ribbon to lift out your cards. So I'm going to just pop that to the side and let's take a look. So this is what the backs look like. Not my favorite card deck backing ever. I'm actually not a fan of white borders on backings. I think it would have been a lot prettier without, but it does have white borders on the front as well. And it is silver gilded. Now I've used the heck out of my deck. And while there are 
are worn spots in the gilding. Um, it's held up very well, all things considered. I think it'd be great to have a deck, this deck come out without gilded edges. But again, considering the price point, you're getting a nice quality cardstock, you're getting beautiful artwork, and you're getting gilded edges, a nice box. I mean, like a really nice book, like all the details are there. So let's take a peek at the artwork. Now, a lot of people will tell you that the Fountain Tarot is very like devoid of emotion, that it's very... Um, sometimes people will call this deck cold. I don't see this deck as cold at all. And maybe my maybe my experience of it is, is unique or different than others. The color palette in this deck is cooler, yes. So it does have a lot of like cool, cool color tones like blues and whites, but there are warmer tones in the deck. To me, it almost feels watery. It feels to me actually to be really modern and expressive. It is a more diverse deck than what we were definitely seeing around the time that this deck came out. And the artwork has this just quality of light about it. It is all done with oil paintings. I like that it does seem to be straightforward and clear to me. I don't get a lot of um, muddiness with this deck. The messages come through clearly and cleanly. If anything, I would say it's clean or crisp. I wouldn't describe it as cool or cold. There is emotion for sure throughout this deck. And there's also these like really interesting contrasting cards or these intimate kind of feeling cards like the Six of Cups where you feel like there's this literal bubble around these this figure. And this almost looks like it's gazing into a memory pool or something. I love that. Um, there are some of some of the artwork does feel like it goes off in its own direction, like here in the judgment card where we see people bursting out of their these like sort of horns. It's a really interesting perspective. I don't know that this would be the first deck I would recommend to an absolute beginner because the artwork does go its own way in some places. Um, and it might feel like it doesn't have quite enough to offer you as a if you were brand new to tarot. But it's just there's something about it that's really special. And I think it gets overlooked a lot because people see these more muted color tones. I freaking love this two of cups. Um, people see these more muted color tones and they just, they, they assume it's going to be lackluster. And it's funny because I adore vibrant, bold art or bold colors in decks. And for some reason, this one, I just, it's just, it's been a long time favorite. There's a lot of personality in the characters in this deck. I just, I really love it. It feels dynamic. There's a lot of movement you can see in different cards. It feels like interestingly intimate with a lot of the characters. Um, I just really, really enjoy it. It's very different than a lot of, this is one of my favorite four of coins ever. I love the six of swords. The perspectives are just really, really interesting. Um, also probably my favorite seven of swords or nine of swords in all time. Love the tower. Yeah, there's just, it's really great stuff. I wanted to see if I could find that seven of swords. Um, where are you? There you are. I love that. I love that Seven of Swords. It's so super clear. Um, and yet it's kind of minimalist in it. Um, I love this deck and I think it's a fantastic bargain um, for what you get. So let's zoom back out. Perfect. So let's take a quick look at the guidebook. So the guidebook again has a linen finish. It, I don't know, I think it's a glued binding, but it, my copy is held up really well. What I really like about this is you get a full page for every single card, which I love. Now there's no images in here, but the other thing you get in the guidebook that I think is really great is you get a little keyword or key phrase. And I think you get that, yeah, you get that even on the minor arcana. So for example, queen of wands, charismatic compassion, king of wands, inspiring possibilities. Um, three of cups, rejuvenating love. Seven of coins, patient resolve. And those are very helpful if you're trying to learn the tarot to have a quick key phrase as well as the paragraph. You do get both upright and reversed meanings, which I appreciate when that is offered because I have gone back and forth about reading reversals or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it depends on the day, the question, the deck. Um, but I like having the options. So it's always, nowadays I feel kind of bummed when there's no reversed meanings in the guidebook because it's always interesting to get the perspective of the creator on the tarot card meaning, even if, like I know the tarot very well, I'm more than 20 years into reading, I, I'm very comfortable with what everything means, but I geek out and love reading different perspectives. That's one of my favorite things about having a variety of decks to work with. So I love when those meanings are there. So these are 
some of my favorite, most affordable tarot decks that I would happily recommend to people who are asking me for something affordable that will fit in their budget, but also be really great. I think all of these have something really unique to offer. I tried to show a good variety here. I will do another one of these videos in the future. So if you have requests for certain types of things you're looking for, like if you want an episode where I talk only about Oracle decks or something like that, let me know. I will probably mix it up. It won't always be only tarot. So yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts of all of these. If you have any of them, how you, what your experiences with them have been, been like, please let me know in the comments down below what you think. Um, if you have any here that you think are not a great buy, feel free to share that as well. I am definitely here to just help support and provide some different options for you guys. And it's always helpful when you can help each other in the comments as well. So thank you so, so much for watching. Please do remember to click like on this video if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful or, or useful in some way. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here for more content like this. Please do click the little bell if you want to be notified and make sure on your mobile device you turn on those notifications so you actually get them when I randomly go live or put up new content. As always, all the links to support the channel are in the description box down below, so please feel free to check those out at your leisure. I really appreciate that. Thank you so, so much, and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.